Hi, welcome to the Jeff and Jerry Show. My name is Jeff, I'm the borough manager of Mount Pleasant. And my co-host... Jerry Lucia, Mayor of Mount Pleasant. Jerry, I know this is an exciting day. We, we planned have, it for a long time. We have talked about this for a long time, and um, it's an exciting time for Mount Pleasant downtown. It sure is. It's, it's like uh, our heart had stopped for uh, about a month or so, and then it started beating again. Well, in, in, uh, in the retail business, there's something called the anchor stores. Yes. And if you go to a mall, the anchor stores are usually on the end, but they're the big name stores that people go to. And then in between, there's the other fillers that people shop at. Well, we have always had an anchor store in Mount Pleasant. And uh, I'm not sure how long, but we'll find out today. <laughs> but um, that anchor store came back. Yes, it did. And it, it came back because someone had a dream that they were not going to give up on. That's right. And uh, it kind of makes you feel um, like, like Mount Pleasant uh, is home again. Yes. The downtown has a home again. So I hope everybody knows we're talking about Levin's. Levin's has um, come back home, we'll say, at this point. Mm -hmm. And our guest today is Robert Levin, who is the owner of Levin's at this point in time. And we're going to learn a little bit more about the history of Levin's. So Robert, welcome to the show. Great to be on the show, guys. Robert, How great. long have you been mayor of Mount Pleasant? Uh, 34 years. It's a long time. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, today, Robert, um, briefly before the show started, we talked about the history. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think everybody likes to know, there's probably been some discussion about the history, and it's probably been some history that nobody knows about. So today we want to talk a little bit about, about the beginning. So sure. how did the store begin? Okay, well, it started before my time. So it's stories that I've heard and have been passed down in the family. But um, uh, my uh, grandparents were immigrants. They originally came to um, the Chicago, southern Wisconsin era before the um, uh, turn, of the cent turn of the 20th century, before 1900. They made their way over to Mount Pleasant uh, around uh, a little before World War I, and my grandfather really didn't have any skills, so he was a peddler. And he peddled in the neighborhood, and he did that for a number of years until he was able to save up enough money to go in with a partner and buy the first of the little piece of the, uh, became the Levin Furniture Store. And it was a secondhand store when it opened up, and then gradually over time, they acquired uh, adjacent properties, expanded it out, uh, became um, a full line furniture store. And um, all of his, so Sam's, all of his kids, six daughters, all of my aunts and my dad was the, the kind of uh, expected to go into the business because he was the man back then. That's what the, the values were. And uh, they ran that business. And then when my father graduated from college in the 1940s, he came uh, into the business. And then um, in the 1970s, uh, it was my brother Howard, who was uh, the head of the business for about 15 years or so. And then he passed away, yes. unfortunately, in 1993. And I was living in Washington, DC at the time. And uh, I came back originally just to really handle the estate and ended up Staying. So, uh, and that was 28 years ago, and uh, that's the history. And then a few years ago, oh. I, oops, sorry, keep going. Sorry, or, well, the or, little, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. The little store, the peddler store, I'll call it. Yes. Was that the area that was closest to Allison News, that little section? Was that the first section? You know, I think the, because uh, the rest of it looks like one big bill. One big building. Yeah, I think that the original store was right on the corner. The um, where that, the alley. Is. Yes, where the alley, where the alley yeah. right is now, and then they expanded out uh, and acquired. They must the have acquired other, that little area. The other then. properties, right? And, and well, it's Kalola Way. 
It's Colello Way. That's yeah. right. Named after Named Frank after. Colello, a wonderful man and who worked, uh, worked for our family for many years. And so when your grandfather, uh, did you have a chance to talk to him? You know, do you have a relationship with him? I was born in 1956, and uh, my grandfather passed away in 1959. So I was barely three years old. I, I just have very, very you know fuzzy memories about him. But I, I've heard all the stories about him. He was a real character and a good guy. He really now, was. his philosophy of when he opened up the store, or when he was a peddler, is it was it carried through as, as a tradition for the Levins, well, or did, did was it changed as your yeah. as your dad and your brother took over and you know this business most businesses are people businesses and especially if you have a business in a small town you know everybody and back then there weren't uh, finance companies you did your own books you had your own credit and uh, what was really uh, unique about my grandfather is that he extended very generous credit terms to his customers, uh, especially in the Depression when so many people were out of work. He realized that if, uh, you know, if we can have hope for the future that the economy will come back, people are going to get their jobs back and eventually they'll be able to pay on their bills. So he really believed that, and he took that risk, but it really worked out for him because uh, there were a lot of places that would not extend credit, and he did. And um, I know you have a, you have a story have a about story that, too. You that. Just, yeah. I, just, I thought it would be interesting for you to tell your own experience. I, I got married, in, um, and that was in 1966, and 65, excuse me. And... Um, we uh, rented a house on Diamond Street, Mount Pleasant, and I had the key to the front door, and there wasn't a stick of furniture to go <laughs> to that house. So we went up to Levin's, and we talked to your mother and dad also, and uh, they put me in uh, with the, one of the salesmen, Joe, I uh, uh, can't remember Joe's last name. Joe Smithola. Smithola, yeah. yes. And Joe come down to the house. It was completely empty. And Joe says, you should have this, 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 this. And we went up to the store and we picked out what we wanted. And uh, That was back in the days when we sold linoleum and oh, appliances. And linoleum, you had rugs. Yeah. You had appliances, the refrigerator, the stove, the washing machine, the dryer. Everything <laughs> was furnished in that house. And um, your dad says, no, let's sit down and we'll figure out how, what the bill will be. And he says, you have to come in once a month and this is what you'll pay on your bill. No bank, no credit unions. It was your father and, and myself. And uh, I mean, that's something uh, Till I die, I'll never forget. Yeah, there's lots of stories, and, and the, the ones I like the most are the stories about how uh, we had a lot of customers who were farmers, and during the Depression, it was tough, and so Sam had a big family, and seven kids, and there were a lot of mouths to feed, so he would accept uh, any produce or farm products as, as the payments. Yeah. So eggs, cheese, butter... Uh, so that I love the idea that people are bringing in uh, yeah. things that they're producing on their farm as their payment. Well, my grandfather and my uncle owned Landy's service station of Bunker Hill. Mm -hmm. Sure. And there was a big sign that said no credit. Right. But they did the same thing. Yeah. You, they would put in the book, so much gasoline for two dozen eggs. Right. So they would take produce from farmers in lieu of cash, but they wouldn't take credit. Yeah. Well, you know, there is still, I mean, there's still a barter economy that exists mm -hmm. in the country, but mm -hmm. those days have, as we've become, you know, a little bit different uh, business, uh, most credit now is done through banks. It's just the way that it's it's being done. And, and you know, with live-in furniture, you fill out a credit application and, uh, you know, we finance you through uh, Wells Fargo or yeah, like that, or Synchrony. Yeah. Large companies. 
So, yeah, but those are the great old days of the company. And, uh, they sh and you know what? It was established, just... established a reputation and a, uh, people felt uh, confident and committed. And then they remembered. And then the parents would tell their children, go to Levin's. And yes. They'll, they'll take care of you. Now, so, now there, was, there was competition in town by Herbert. Oh, sure. There? Yeah, right across the street. Did they have the same philosophy as Levin's? You know, I think back in those days, most people did. I didn't, you know, know them as well, but I do have a funny story about about Herbert. I just hadn't <laughs> thought about this for years. When I was about eight or nine, they put in a Pepsi machine in Herbert's, and my dad didn't really want me to drink a lot of pop and stuff. But anyway, so I would like walk by and I could see it in the window. <laughs> One day, I got up the courage to go in and, buy and they Pepsi. had, no, it was free. Oh. It, was like oh, a it, was little free. it was a little Dixie cup, just a few ounces, and you would put it in the, um, you know, it was a fountain drink. And I asked if I could have a Pepsi, and uh, he gave me one, so that was great. So I, I remember that. So you did shop at Herb? Well, I got, <laughs> I got, I got my Pepsi, <laughs> and that was it. But I used to, I used to, I loved um, when Samer's, when Candy Lynn was open, I used to like to go up for, um, uh, my favorite soda was vanilla drink, which was basically soda water with uh, uh, vanilla in it, mm -hmm. and it was ten cents. And so I, I, I learned how to kind of work my father. <laughs> so I would wait until he was waiting on a customer, and I would go up to him and say, "Dad." could I get 10 cents to buy something to drink? And because he was waiting on a customer, he didn't want to make it seem like he was a bad father. <laughs> yeah, no, so he would always have to <laughs> shell it out. So I really learned, you know, so you the art of negotiation. The before you exactly. The I, learned how to, I learned how to work the boss. Was your operation uh, uh, pretty much your father and your mother was on the back of my father, my, uh, my mother, my uncle, uh, Milt uh, Guestpass, was involved oh, yes. in the uh, business for many, many years. We had a wonderful staff, of just terrific <coughs> employees, um, uh, uh, just a, a wonderful group. Of and they were all Mount Pleasant people. They were Mount Pl in the in the in area, area. Sure, Mount area. Pleasant. We had a wonderful uh, man who would come in from the mountains every day at a long drive. Uh, Larry Holiday was his name, and. Uh, Basil Hawanchek from uh, Derry, from La Trobe, uh, who eventually moved to Mount Pleasant. And Bob Francis, of course, it, you know and Bob. You and, and Basil are still and that time. Yeah, <laughs> and Basil worked for the company for over 40 years and was really instrumental in, in expanding the uh, business and uh, you know, helped uh, uh, get us our, our facility here in, in uh, Smithton you know, after the, we had the fire and, and the yeah. warehouse and uh, uh, and then with the expansion uh, into the Pittsburgh market. It's an interesting story about how Levin's expanded into Pittsburgh and that's really was my brother's doing back in the mid 1970s waterbeds. Water Remember waterbeds became really popular? Well my brother was very much an entrepreneur and he saw that this could be a big business and so we had the, we were running my aunt's store, the Levin Furniture in Connellsville at the time. And in the basement of the Connellsville store was a gallery, a Whirlpool appliance gallery. But this was at the time that specialty appliance retailers like the appliance store, Sun TV, Silo, they were all coming into business and they were dominating the um, uh, appliance business. So Howard, made a decision, I'm going to stop selling appliances, I'm going to convert the basement of that store to water into bed. a waterbed gallery. The business went through the roof. It was incredible how many waterbeds we sold. And then he was very aggressive and he promoted them uh, very much uh, you know, on, in the newspaper and on TV. He opened up a couple waterbed stores in Pittsburgh and then from there, he real, his juices got flowing, and he realized mm -hmm. he wanted to be wanted to have furniture business in Pittsburgh. But just a little un, a little known fact: that Pittsburgh, in the 1980s, became the second biggest waterbed market in the United States oh, huh. okay. after Denver, Colorado. 
oh. because of all the advertising. Yeah. And uh, he was in a, he got into a price war with a company called Dream Water Beds, and they kept every week they would lower the price. <laughs> got down, you could buy a complete water bed, everything for eighty eight dollars, which was like wow. I think below cost at the time. So uh, I was just say, did the manufacturer work with working with you on the well, cost we a, a lot. little bit? So if you if you buy a lot, you can usually get better pricing. So, but that was the that's how Levin's went into the Pittsburgh market. Was at a time when the mills were closing, a lot of furniture businesses were going out of business. There was a company that had uh, a couple of stores, one in Monroeville and one in the South Hills. And my father, you know, let my brother do it. It was a little bit risky, mm -hmm. uh, but he did, and that was the basis of the expansion out of Pittsburgh. And uh, so that would he then over the next number of years he opened up more stores in Pittsburgh, and then it, then in 1992 he opened in Cleveland. So wow. that, that's kind of a little bit of a history of how the company grew. But what's really great is um, we just celebrated 100 years in the furniture business. And uh, the 100 year anniversary, of course, was the 100 year anniversary of the opening of the original Mount Pleasant store. And what was the date? You know, I don't know the exact day. I, the well, year. We I, will just do the year. The year is 1920. Yeah. Because so, when you open up back in Mount Pleasant, we are going to have to have a big celebration. Well, we'll have a big grand reopening yes, for sure. Yes. Yeah. We have to. There's a, there was another company that briefly occupied that space, that filled up the store with a lot of merchandise that we'll have to sell off their inventory before we bring our own inventory mm -hmm. on. So we're hoping for a um, uh, spring opening. The plan will be to um, uh, have the small the original Herbert's location, which was a clearance center, mm -hmm. that's going to stay as a mattress specialty store, and then it'll allow us to have more room in the main in the store, store for, your furniture. for our furniture. So, but we ask customers and, until that store opens, we, we're doing our, uh, we have a beautiful store in Greensburg, and that's where customers are shopping now before the Mount Pleasant store reopens. Mm -hmm. So um, we're still able to satisfy and help our customers in Mount Pleasant. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of the residents in town that are going to Greensburg, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, but it's they a, says, a good staff and we have the full assortment of our products yes. there. What does it mean to have the store back in Mount Pleasant? Well, you know, it's, it, there's a sentimental quality yeah, oh, of having it. It's yes. where, you know, I grew up and, uh, you know, went to school there and, uh, and you know there aren't a lot of small town furniture stores left in the United no. States. There's been a real consolidation that's occurred, as um, you know, companies are going out of business and being replaced by others. So to be able to still have the original store in Mount Pleasant is is unusual, and uh, you know it's just really wonderful to be able to um, stay in business and uh, to have the wherewithal because we're a strong company financially and um, you know our advertising you know if somebody's watching KDKA TV they're customers of all the Pittsburgh stores but they're also watching if they're if they're in Mount Pleasant as well too so you from an advertising nice, standpoint you did a nice commercial uh, Christmas time with the kids well we used to do with the with the kids but we weren't able to with COVID my wife and I were in the commercial this oh, year I yes. really saw that we yes. We had a we were um, fundraising for Children's Hospital, and we had a little llama, little um, stuffed animal that we were selling for five dollars and contributing mm -hmm. to uh, the proceeds to Children's. Which, by the way, we we got out of we uh, were back ordered on our llama. <laughs> <laughs> so much of the furniture has been delayed. That's oh, been a problem yeah. that we've had. Uh, the vendors are uh, having trouble shipping product because of uh, COVID, but. Also, because business has been very good, and and they've had more orders than they expected, and so it's taking a while for the supply chain to catch up. So I say to people who there are some people who've been waiting for a while for their furniture that you know we're really doing our, our best, we're trying our hardest to get that product. My wife and I bought two chairs. We we waited four months before two chairs. they just came in last week. So did you go to the bands to get them. We did. <laughs> <laughs> You, you've been in Mount Pleasant as long as some of us, as long as Jerry. <laughs> but um, what have you seen 
as far as the downtown of all the years. And has it always been very supportive of Levin's? Has has oh has has the because the, the downtown's changed a lot. Sure. Probably probably the one consistency, and we can name a lot of stores downtown, but uh, saloons, saloons yeah. and Levin's. Yeah. Might be the two most consistent, right? Yeah. Well, when I was growing up, you know, in the '60s, there were you know, all the clothing stores. Oh, oh, you know the malls. Saloons. The malls kill that business. Simon. Simon. Fashion shop, Hollywood shop. You know all of those. Yeah. All of those family-run businesses that, uh, you know, it's tough to keep those businesses going in a small town now. Yeah. That's why, why Levin's can do it, is because we can, as I say, amortize the cost. The advertising over, you know, by advertising on a Pittsburgh television your station, people will front, see us. Your windows. Or, your window you? displays draw the interest in. You know, that's one of the things that I really uh, am excited about, that we obviously didn't get it bought in time for this holiday, this past holiday mm -hmm. season, but, you know, we're going to go back to those beautiful window oh. displays, which uh, I was always excited to see them, and we have a wonderful, uh, truly fantastic employee of the company, we, D. Henry. We, and we did a show with D. We did a show, did a show with, with D. D. So yeah. next month, uh, is it the day before Valentine's Day or three days before Valentine's Day? But anyway, she was hired on her uh, uh, her nineteenth birthday at Levin's, and that'll be fifty-two years. Uh, we did the next, 50th. next We did month. the fiftieth. And she uh, she you, uh, originally worked with my with my mother in doing the uh, the windows of the store, but now she does them herself, and such a beautiful job. And they just it's really my favorite time of year mm -hmm. in Mount Pleasant. Just Soon after Thanksgiving, they uh -huh. get some going, and uh, uh -huh. it's just exciting to drive through town at night. Oh yes, and, uh, you know because we don't have the manger, uh, so it's really the focal point, I think, for for celebrating Christmas. In, yes, it in, is. In Mount Pleasant, it, everyone comes to see the decorations. Yeah. I know that they're really great. Well, so, again, it's another tradition. It's a it's a great tradition, and, and I think people look for tradition today. Absolutely, there's so much non-traditional things going on. Yeah. So, you know, it's continuity, it's tradition, it's, uh, you know, trying to provide good service. You know, you don't make every single customer 100% happy, but, you you know, you try your best. And uh, so people come back and now, they feel that they've been treated. Well. When you came back you know, into the business, uh, the first time that you and I really talked hard was when we had a fire, the... Uh, Georgia Cunningham fire. Yes, oh my God, I almost lost And uh, <clears throat> Levin's were always supportive to the parks in town and uh, anything that you could contribute to and donate to, you did. Yeah, but well, this the fire department, I mean, we had a multi, we've had a serious, you know, a number of fires. It was always my, my father's biggest worry that, um, you know, he would lose a, lose a store or lose his warehouse to a fire. Yeah. Well, and uh, the, the fire department has been just really incredible over the years, and we're so grateful for, for all the efforts they made. They, they saved our building during the Georgia Cunningham fire. The Georgia Cunningham fire, uh, your store was right attached to it, and that was your offices, too. That's right. The main office was there in yeah. the second floor. Oh, part. I thought it was on the... Uh... No, the, the in the Herbert side. side of the street. Yeah, I didn't know that. It, it was, used to be. Uh, originally, the offices were in the back of the yeah. store, but then they went over to the second yeah. floor. What we did uh, on that particular fire is uh, the chief from Greensburg, I brought air trucks in to blow air into a building, okay? And the chief from Greensburg took over that part of the operation. At Hutchison, he was a chief for fifty something. I remember years. we were there all night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they it put the heroic. fan. They put the big tubes in the store, and it positive ventilated that store. So anything that would come through the brickwork would be forced back, and that Just, saved that store. Yeah. Huh. In return for that job, we were in process of buying the warehouse that was on Church Street. Yeah, that was uh, by, owned by the Stoner family. Right, yeah. and um, we were in working it out with uh, Almeida and yourself, but 
to buy that, had your mother and yourself come up to the fire station and said, um, we uh, have decided that we are not selling the building. We're going to give it to the fire department. And I believe at that time the building was like $45,000, you know, and, and we, we have maintained it. If you drive by it, you know, we took the windows out and bricked them in and put heat in it and really fixed the building up nice. Yeah. But it's been a big asset to the fire department. And then, then you had the warehouse fire. Right. And uh, after that the warehouse great. fire, uh, you have donated that property to the borough of Mount Pleasant. And uh, I mean, it, you've just, no one ever in, in the history of the town of all these years have been don donating free to the municipality as you have. And, and God love your mother. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> they believed that, you know, that the town kept them in business. And uh -huh. these are their neighbors. And uh, so that's the motivation. But I had to bring those points out because if yeah. people don't realize it, when the key goes in the door, come on down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're excited and. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a great day when we get the stores oh, reopened. So, what well, a big celebration! <laughs> oh my goodness! Yes. Oh, I think yeah. they're making they're changing the signs now, aren't they? I think I, I saw them up there the other I day. I think they're, they're, they're yeah. We have two stores in Pittsburgh that we're working on as well too. One out in um, up by the airport, Robinson Town Center area, and then one in McMurray, which is in Peters Township. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of projects going on. And then the other exciting news. Uh, for Levens is uh, we're, uh, we're going to be taking over two other Love's locations that were former Wolf Furniture stores. So we'll be opening, for the first time ever, we'll be opening a Levin Furniture store in Altoona and one in Johnstown. And those will uh, open as Levin stores probably uh, late spring or early summer. Two so good we're, locations. We're excited about that as well, too. Just, uh, mm -hmm. Now we're talking to you. Is there still members of the family that are with you in operation, or are you are the operation now? Uh, the I'm it <laughs> for the family. <laughs> yeah. So I do have two partners, uh, super nice uh, young men, who are also with a family business, uh, the Schultz family, which is an 80-year-old business out of Erie, and they came in as partners with me and uh, are doing a terrific job. They also, they have a family business still in, in Erie called John B. Schultz Furniture and uh, has share the same values. They realize the importance of family, of people, and uh, bring, you know, a more traditional kind of approach to running a business. So it's great to have that help. Uh, you know, what the main reason I retired is I found it was really getting too much. It was a big company and I didn't have other family members in the business, and so I thought this would be a good time to you know, transition. But now having uh, another family in the business, and young men that I feel, again, share the values and are smart and uh, have a vision for the future, I think we're really well set now for our company for many years to come, so happy about that. Well, we have about um, a minute left. Okay. Now, we normally do a half-hour show okay. uh, per guest, but on rare occasions, uh, sometimes they get, you can't get enough in on a half an hour. So, do you have time to do a part two? Sure. You want me to do a mattress commercial? No. <laughs> not yet. We may save that for the end. Okay. But, but, uh, we're going to do it. We're going to, uh, so for our guests and our, uh, our listeners and watchers, we're going to do a part two. Uh, with Robert Levin. Jerry, are you up for it? Oh, all the time. <laughs> okay, because I, I want to get into you gotta, some... you got to get some more stories. So. I want to oh, get into I, some I stories. I haven't been yet. <laughs> we want to talk about the stories and about the, Levin, the new era, uh, era for Levin. Sure. We'll do that. Okay, so for Jeff and Jerry and Robert, stay tuned for part two of the Jeff and Jerry Show with Robert Levin. Uh,